Hello everyone. Welcome to the lecture 6 of Comsol Multiphysics training course. Today we are going to discuss the modeling of porous medium in Comsol. So let's start. What is porous medium? A porous medium or a porous material is a material containing pores or voids through the structure. The skeletal or solid portion of the material is called matrix or frame. The pores are typically filled with a fluid such as liquid or gas. Here is one example of a porous medium. The application and examples of porous materials are very wide and we can find different porous structures around ourselves. For example, lightweight foams and sponges are types of porous materials. Thermal insulation materials and filtration materials could be porous structures. Also, new dielectric materials are based on porous structures. In fact, porous materials can be used for different applications. The size of pores could be from very small scale, such as nanoscales or microscales, to larger scales. That's why they can provide different properties. One important thing in modeling of porous structure is that the pores of a porous structure are not necessarily identical and they are not homogeneously distributed through the structure. In some simplifications, we can consider that the pores are distributed homogeneously and the shapes are similar so that you can model them with circular shapes or spherical shapes and some random distribution through the structure. However, in order to capture the actual properties, it is good to have a real model of a porous structure. That's what we are going to do here today. Okay, as usual, let's see what examples we are going to solve. We are going to find the capacitance of a microporous plastic foam, such as what we have in some capacitors. In this study, we are going to model a porous medium using an image. This image could be from a CT scan, a scanning electron microscopy, or even an optical image. It depends on how we take the picture. One thing that we are going to discuss today is how to convert an image to a readable geometry in COMSOL. This method can be used for other shapes, not necessarily for porous structures or porous medium. We can basically use the technique that I'm going to discuss today to import other images or pictures into console multiphysics software. So we can use that for other systems as well. Finally, we are going to find the overall capacitance using the electrostatics interface. So in fact, we are going to review this interface as well. Okay, this is the model that we are going to solve. I took this picture from one of my experiments using scanning electron microscopy on a plastic foam. The foam is made of a polymer and as you can see here, the solid content or the skeletal structure is in brighter color. However, the dark sides are the pores which are filled by air. So in fact, we have this bright solid content and we have the dark porosity or voids through the structure. The dimensions are very small because we are using a scanning electron microscope, if you are familiar with that. Okay, let's start modeling. However, before we go to console, we need to do some image processing on this image and then we can import it into console. So we need to convert this image to a binary shape, which means we have just white and dark colors, where the white color indicates the solid content and the dark color indicates the pores. Also, we have to save it in a DXF file because it's a 2D image. And finally, we can import it to console. So let's start. I want to show you the image first and then I will show you how to process the image. Okay, I just opened the image and this is actually the JPEG format of the image that I have. You can use other formats as well. To process this image and to separate the solid content and the voids, we need to use another software to make it binary. To do this, there are different methods to use. If you are familiar with other software for image processing, you can use that. 
but I'm going to use an open source software called ImageJ as a very useful software to process this image. Okay, so if I import the image by opening it, there we go. I have the image open in the ImageJ software. I can use the process to make it smooth or sharpen or even other filters on the image. Like I said, we are going to simplify our model. For example, if I click on a smooth, I can separate the bright side and the dark side a little bit more. And then if I go to process and then I go to binary and click make binary, that's it. We are going to separate the solid content and the voids. In fact, we are simplifying our model. And now we have a binary image, including only two phases the solid structure and the voids. This is what we are going to use for the next step. I'm going to save it as a TIFF or a JPEG format. After we save it as a TIFF format, we need to save it as a DXF file. I cannot save it using ImageJ here, so I need another software to save it as a DXF file. Again, there are different methods of doing this process or exporting this image as a DXF file, but here I'm going to use another open access software, which is very useful for image editing stuff, and it's called Inkscape. So I'm going to open the TIFF format of this image that I already saved in the Inkscape software. That's it. Now the binary image is open in the Inkscape software. See, I saved it as a porous SEM1 using the TIFF format. Okay. You may also make it as binary in this software, or you can also use other software. Just click on this picture, go to path, trace bitmap, and then we can say OK, and then close this. You have to drag it and then delete this original one. And this is the one that we need. Now we can save it as a DXF. Just go to save as and then we find DXF in the software and save and then we can save it as a DXF file to be importable into console software. Now let's go to the console and continue the modeling over there. Okay, so far we were able to convert our JPEG image to a binary image to separate the solid content and the voids or porosities and then we convert that binary image to a DXF file which is readable by console multiphysics. Now let's start our modeling in here. So as before we are starting with model wizard and because we are going to use a 2D system and we have a 2D image we are going to use a 2D model. After we click on 2D we can find the physics or the interface and because we are going to find the capacitance of the system we are going to use the electrostatics. We are going to have more examples on electrostatics later on. Okay, I just add electrostatics and then continue with the study. For the study, I'm going to use the stationary and then done. Okay, now we are in the software environment. To insert our image or our geometry into the system, we have to import that DXF file. Before we do so, I'm going to change the units to micrometer, right? And then I right click onto geometry and then click import. After I click import in the source, I can simply go to DXF file and then browse and select that DXF file I made. Let's do it. As you see, I have added the porous SEM1 as a DXF file and then I can import it. I'm going to keep it as form solid, but I'm going to explain these two other options as well, right? Let's not touch anything else and then click on import and wait. There you go. We have imported, which is actually our voids or ports. There is no solid content, but don't worry. I'm going to fix that. Before we do that, let me show you something interesting. If instead of form solid, I use knit curves, and then build selected, the image is imported as one curve in total. And if I go do not knit and then build selected, I'm gonna have several curves for each model. And you can add and delete 
and do whatever you want on this right but for now let's just go back and use form solid and then build selected and then use the solid definition for our geometry okay so these shapes are actually showing our voids or porosities but we do have a solid content around this shape so what we can do we can basically right click and then have a rectangle which surrounds this domain which can also form the solid content before we continue i just noticed that the dimensions are somehow mismatch my dimension for example i had 3.6 micrometers in the y direction and 5 micron in the x dimension however it is somehow different maybe because of the pixels or importing or anything i don't know it's not a big problem i can simply fix it i just need to find the ratio between one length to the ratio of my image or my model so for this case we can simply right click on geometry and then in the transforms we can simply use scale i just wanted to show how to use the scale and that's why i have this added here okay for this we have the isotropic and then we can select the whole thing and what is the factor i want to make it smaller and make it from this hundreds of micron to five micron i already did some calculation and i know that the scale factor for my case is 5 over 375 that's it if i click on build selected and just wait we can simply scale it down to the size that i originally have there you go see now we have 5 micron and we have 3.6 micron which is the actual size interesting right now we have the scaled size and we need to add solid content into the system so i'm gonna use the rectangle and then i'm gonna surround all these weights based on the dimensions i know that i'm gonna use 5 micron and 3.6 micron here and i have to shift it a little bit to the direction that fully cover my system right that's it don't worry about that you can find it for your own system based on the image you have and if i click on build selected and wait for a few seconds i have this solid content covering the voids because in this example i'm going to model the capacitance i'm gonna add two more rectangles on top and bottom as the electrodes okay so let's just use these numbers for the top electrode and the bottom electrode so the width is 5.05 and the height is 0.1 micron for the x gonna be minus 0.02 and for y would be minus 0.11 that's it it is in the bottom electrode and then i just use duplicate and for the top electrode same size we just need to shift it upward i'm gonna use 3.59 that's it so we have the top electrode and the bottom electrode and finally we have form union and build all now if you go to the geometry we have the union shape so as you see we were able to insert a porous material in, and we have the voids or porosity through the structure and the pores are not necessarily similar or homogeneously distributed this is very important to actually model the system and find a good understanding of your system you can use this method for your application it doesn't have to be the capacitance that we are modeling today you can use it for fluid flow for filtration for dielectric properties for any other application that you deal with the porous media right we just want to show you how to actually model a porous medium from an image okay the rest is just to find the capacitance what i'm gonna do is i'm going to define the materials to do this i'm gonna use basically add material from library and because it's a porous structure i'm gonna add air into the system i intentionally 
selected air as the first material because as you remember the first material is automatically split to the whole system i did this because i just want to remove the solid content and the top and bottom electrodes therefore i don't have to go and select one by one right for the electrodes i'm going to add copper and for the plastic or the solid structure i'm going to use a blank material so let me close the material library and then see how we can do that for the copper i'm going to select top and bottom electrodes and finally we have the solid content for the skeletal portion of the system so i'm going to use blank material and then i click on the solid content right and as you see here for electrostatics we only have the relative permittivity as the active property that we need to insert and in this case based on some standard permittivities for some plastics i want to use a number for example two as the relative permittivity of the solid content it's not important for now because we just want to have two different phases or two different domains in the system air and the solid content right i think everything is clear now just not to forget in the previous video we discussed electric currents interface and we needed the conductance but in the electrostatics we just need the permittivity right let's continue now we have to define the physics before we do that let's adjust the out of plane thickness to 1 e minus 5 which is 10 micron this is the number that i selected it depends on your design or your system right now we have to define the boundary condition and as you may remember from previous video we need a ground boundary condition as a reference for our system and i'm going to use the bottom electrode for that the next boundary condition that I'm going to use is the terminal. Even though I have other boundary conditions that are useful for different cases, and as you remember, same as the previous case, we need to use the terminal. In the previous study, we used terminal in the electric current interface to find the resistance or conductance. Here, we need to use the terminal to find the capacitance. And then I'm going to use the top electrode for that case. And I'm going to use the voltage as the input of the system which is not important because the capacitance is something related to the structure and material and we don't need to be worried about this value right i think that's it we are all set with the physics the next step is meshing for the meshing i'm gonna use the normal mesh and i should say that it's gonna take a bit longer than normal because we have so many geometries with complicated shapes so don't expect a very fast meshing for this case i'm gonna click on build all and wait for meshing okay the meshing is done it took a while and it looks a bit scary but don't worry you have a porous structure with non-homogeneously distributed pores in a micro scale level but for your case it could be simpler and faster okay so the next step is solving right we just go to stationary and click on compute and wait for solving it may also take a while to solve for the system okay the problem is solved and the default result is the electric potential distributed which was one on top and zero on the bottom right that's it so let's find what we are looking for which is the overall capacitance of the system when we have the electrode on top and bottom and we have a porous structure with a plastic solid content and prosody filled with air through the structure right same as before we need a global parameter we go to the derived value and then right click then go to global evaluation and then under expressions we expand and then go to electrostatics and terminal and now we go to maxwell capacitance we click and add it and that's it we are here and the next step is just to have evaluate right when we do so the capacitance is calculated and it's here let's drag it upward and that's it this is the capacitance in farads and as we expect it is a very small value because we have a tiny geometry 
and we are not expecting a large number, right? So we can also find other results from the electrostatics feature, but for now, we just don't need it because the main purpose of this video was to model the porous medium, right? Okay, remember, we did some simplification in the system, but at least we could capture the non-homogeneous porosity and somehow actual geometry of the system because we used the actual image of the model. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video, so stay tuned for the next videos.